In this video, I build an amazing tractor that harvests all of the crops from this incredible farm that I've built. I also build some stables, a pigsty, and a big old cow barn. And I finally go to the deep dark for something you might not expect. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Let's create. I died. At the end of the last video, I got cut in half by a mechanical saw down at our barn area. And do you know what? It's fine. But I wasn't supposed to end the video there. I actually recorded enough footage for an entire new video. So I decided that was a good point to stop. And it's a good job I did because we've had some more comments about our trains. And I just want to say that I'm very, very sorry, genuinely this time, for anybody that took my silly sarcastic rant at the beginning of the last video seriously. I love all the comments, particularly the silly ones and particularly the ones that I can respond to in such a fun way because Minecraft's just fun for me and when I can respond like that with those comments I just have a really good time. So anyway in regards to our train situation of course we're not going to be keeping the skateboard of course we're going to be using the freight train to pull the freight but unfortunately Henry oh I mean Nigel of course yes it was a reference to Thomas the Tank being locked away in the hill because he was a naughty train we still don't have any passengers so uh, there's really not much point in you coming out here and clogging up the lines but maybe one day maybe we'll have passengers one day and you'll be able to come out and if you think it's sad seeing nigel locked away it's going to be even more sad saying goodbye to this amazing skateboard thank you very much the pope you have worked very hard for us but i'm sure you're going to go to a better place now with all the other popes and you'll be the talk of the town with your magical skateboard off you go the pope enjoy your time in pope plan it's been lovely having you here i'll see you another time goodbye pope off he goes over to Pokeland. Oh, I'll miss him. It brings a tear to my eye. Right, with the Poke gone, we can get this train all fixed up to that. And, uh, yeah, get these freight carriages pulled by an actual freight train. I have no name for this train, so if you want to give it a name, you can do. And now we have our freight locomotive all tied up with our containers. So I guess if we drive it, it should all be attached. It is. Oh, look at that. An actual freight locomotive pulling freight containers. This is amazing. The only sad news is I don't have a driver for this yet and I'm not going to have one for a little while because, well, there's nowhere for it to actually go. And there's one more set of comments I want to address and that is that all of these corners are way too sharp and do you know what? You are absolutely 100% right. But unfortunately, I just don't have the space to make them bigger. This turning circle here is ridiculous, but that's temporary. That's just because I don't have anywhere for these lines to go and the train needs to turn around. But these ones down here are not going to get any bigger because there's no space to do that and in order to make them bigger I'd have to rebuild all of that and that's just not going to happen so we're just going to have to use our imaginations and just imagine that the trains can go round really tight corners and they don't look silly right okay it's time to continue where the last video left off after I just died and I was just about to build those things that you can already see over there but shh. so now that everything in here is finally working the way I want it it's time to start building everything else now these things are not going to be automated of course we're just going to have a pig and a sheep and a cow pen and some stables over here and that's going to be purely decorative and once all that's in place and then need to do all the floor to make it look like a farmyard decorate all around the outside then basically there's a whole bunch of building to do so i guess it's time for one of those lovely little montages if you're enjoying this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button it only takes a couple of seconds and it really helps me out complete but i think you can get a good idea of where we're going i decided to get rid of the idea of having chickens as well as cows and just make a big old cow barn which the roof slats are all going the wrong way but it won't let me rotate them so i guess we're kind of stuck with them like this they've got little feeding troughs with some hay in and there's only a couple of them in here but that's absolutely fine we'll breed these up so it's nice and full we've got our little piggies that managed to escape while i was building the path so i've got rid of a few blocks in there to try and prevent them from escaping again they've got this nice little pig style that they can go in and even 
even a pet raccoon to play with. And of course we got the stables, which is home to a donkey and no horses currently. However, I do have a couple of horses kicking about at home that can go in here. We've also got room for a nice little tack room here and I need to, uh, yeah, I need to texture the inside of these frame blocks, but we'll worry about that later. Right now, I'm heading back to Hill Valley to go get me horses. And I'm sure you'll remember, but my horses are in here underneath there. And they're, oh geez, and there's still rubbish on here from last time I was here. Get rid of all that junk. Open these double doors and hopefully not take a whole bunch of damage this time when I try and get them out. Right, we'll start with you. Let's get you outside before you get on you. And now let's ride like the wind. And here we are. Right, skeleton horsey, you can go in there. Now I would open the gate and let you in, but they don't actually open. So, you know, it's just for show. Don't worry about it. And uh, when I got back, this was happening and that, that shouldn't be happening. I think it's just a visual bug more than anything, but you can see the entire minecart is in totally the wrong place. But I'm sure it'll be fine next time I come back. Oh, jeez. Come on, Indy, it's time to go. Skeleton horse made it all right, so you can too, I'm sure of it. Ride like the wind, Indy. Like the wind. <laughs> Not that sort of win. Thank you. Oh, this train. Look out. Oh, my train. Oh, my train. Oh, jeez. This game works well. There's no visual issues at all. Indy has made it to the farm safe and sound. Off you get, bud. And you can go in there. There you go. You've got your own little stable board. Amazing. It's all coming together. Speaking of coming together, I've now got to bring this entire thing together with a big old bunch of farmland, a big old bunch of fields. And at some point, I could really do to decorate the rest of the area around this thing as well. I'm thinking maybe we'll have like a side or something here we'll bring the paths around and stuff like that and we'll make it all nice and pretty but for now i'm gonna build a big old farm right down here where this monkey lives excuse me monkey would you like to be a cow no oh go on be a cow where's the other one here he is hello other monkey you are now also a cow there you go wonderful so i've got six items that can be easily planted then we've got our pumpkin and melon scenes which i don't know how easily they are to be automatically harvested and we've got rice as well now i just tried to click rice on this farmland here and it says it won't survive well out of shallow water so i assume that it has to go in the water somehow so we need to figure that out and what we're going to be doing here is just digging big old lanes all the way down here planting loads of crops and then i've got a really interesting way to harvest them and i think i can get away with having four Four rows of whatever we're going to have planted here like this and that's going to still give me plenty of room down here to have some just animal fields and i think the easiest thing to do here is just dig oh geez of course there's no oh there's no ground under here dig trenches <laughs> all the way along there's another monkey down here hello little monkey hello you are now a cow too so now that i've dug this big old water trough and i'm filling the bottom in so we can fill it full of water i'm not actually sure if i need to see obviously for having this as actual farmland it's going to need water in order to be hydrated because that's how things work. Now, technically, yes, I could put a plant in there and stop it becoming unhydrated, but it won't grow very fast doing it that way. But if you can cast your minds back from when we did the wood farm, particularly the azalea trees, we actually used a different type of farmland altogether that didn't require any water. And that is rich soil. And I'm wondering if I can plant things just in rich soil. I cannot. Onions? No. Carrots? No. Potato? No. Okay. Oh, well, oh, that's a shame. Can I? Oh, I I'm dead do it but if oh i can i can make rich soil farmland and that does that not need water you see the advantage of rich soil is that it's automatically got bone meal in it so things grow a whole bunch quicker the problem with rich soil however is you get it from decomposition and that is time with sunlight water and activators which are basically mushrooms and we also need in order to make rich soil organic compost which i've got most of the ingredients for except for straw and i was looking at straw thinking that can't be difficult to make but it is you need wild rice or rice panicles in order to make straw but it says it's obtained by cutting grassy crops and plants with a knife so maybe we could just grab one of those knives we had earlier let's get an iron knife and let's go chop, chop a bunch of these things and see what happens oh look we got straw oh we're gonna need a lot of straw and you don't get all that many what if i use a knife with silk touch does that help Get a bit of straw, but not much. That gives me an idea. As you can see, my idea is working. It's basically just a dispenser with a bunch of bone meal, some observers, and then just a bit of grass. And I can just stand at the front of this thing and I can just chop chop away at this grass and build up a whole pile of straw. It'd be nice if I had a collection system, but I really don't need this thing to be a long-term solution. And I think moving it indoors where the zombies and things can't get me when it's nighttime is probably a good idea. Now, if I stand here, activate my auto-clicker, I will get pretty much infinite straw. 
And here we go. The dispenser has run out of bone meal. My knife didn't seem to take any durability damage, which is nice. And in here we got a bunch more straw. There we go. Tons of straw. So now I need some rotten flesh. A little bit more bone meal. And now I should be able to craft. Oh, you only get one? Oh, geez. Okay. I can craft three pieces. I'm going to need a lot more rotten flesh and a lot more bone meal. Now I think I've got a bunch of rotten flesh over at Hill Valley. Yes, I have. I've got a few bones here as well. Not as much as I would like. In the slime farm, however, I believe we've got a chest absolutely brimming. 12.9 thousand bone meal. <laughs> We're not struggling for bone meal then. I'll just empty that out with my auto clicker. That'll all go into my backpack. Lovely. Now I have all the bone meals. I just need rotten flesh. And I thought there might be a way to craft it with the create mod, but there is not. So I guess for now, while we don't have any, all we can have is a tiny weeny bit of organic compost, which really isn't going to help us out all that much. So I guess we're going to need a whole bunch of water in this anyway, just so that we can actually grow the organic compost next to it. And then at least at that point, it'll turn into rich soil eventually, hopefully. Now I've got no idea how close this needs to be to water, and I don't know if it being right next to water is going to be a problem, but we're going to find that out, I guess. I'm kind of hoping this works a little bit like Podzol and I can just plant mushrooms directly on top of it. I can't. Okay, well, let's do a mushroom every other block and see how we get on. Got sunlight, mushrooms, and water. What more could it need? Well, seems though I've got absolutely no idea how long that's going to take to turn into rich soil, we might as well get everything else planted, which means tilling a whole bunch of this dirt into farmland and then planting a whole bunch of crops. And of course, we're going to do this the most efficient way in Minecraft, which is to do them all in lanes. Okay, then, so far we have onions, potatoes, carrots, cabbage, wheat, tomatoes, and flax. Now rice, I was wondering, oh I can. I don't know whether our harvester will be able to replant it from all the way down there. So then that leaves us with melons and pumpkin seeds. We don't have any beetroot. We need beetroot. I don't think I've found any beetroot. Where do you get beetroot from? Must have beetroot somewhere. Well, I've looked everywhere and I can't find any beetroot, but what I do have are sweet berries, and that might be an unusual thing to plant, but I'm wondering if the harvester can harvest these as well, because that could be quite useful for us, having the berries. You can do an awful lot with the sweet berries, including turn them into dark chocolate ones, white chocolate ones, caramel ones, ruby chocolate ones, and chocolate ones. Oh, my rice is growing. This is good news. Oh, and look, we've got rich soil. Yes. Oh, this is working. I'll leave that to it for a bit. While well, I go looking for beetroot, where on earth would I find beetroot? It's not, well, there is wild beetroot in this, so I could just stumble across it. However, that's going to be probably quite unlikely, but there's a relatively high chance I could find it in a chest or a trail room or something. Oh, what's that? We've got wild something. It's carrots. Don't eat carrots. Hello, guys. Come on, give me beetroot seeds. Oh, I wanted beetroot seeds, guys. I've never, ever wanted beetroot seeds in Minecraft, ever. But now I do. Well, we've got more wild carrots and even some wild onions. But I'm not seeing wild beetroots anywhere. I don't even know where wild beetroots would grow. Maybe they grow on this amazing looking island. Got beetroot written all over it. No, it hasn't. Might have, you don't know. More wild onions. A whole bunch of pumpkins. Shipwrecks will definitely have beetroots in. What is going on? That's a lot of seals. You uh, haven't happened to have seen any beetroots? Beetroots, have you guys? Oh no, no, not these horrible things again. Shoo, go away. Will you stop it? Right, no, oh, no beetroot. Hey guys, don't have to have any beetroot, do you? You could use your farmer villager. Oh yeah. Do any of you morons sell beetroots? No, 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 fine. While I'm here, I've decided it's a good idea to fill up my lava and my water tanks because they're always running out. And that leads me to thinking there must be a way of filling these things up without just having to click on lava and water. Some sort of machine maybe that could do it. It's really infuriating having to go find pools of lava and just click on them in constant constantly with these things in order to fill it up. I guess that's a good way of balancing out the fact that the jetpack is pretty OP, but it's still really annoying. I've got an idea where I'm going to find beetroot, guys. Beetroot seeds are a loot item. They're a junk loot item. And where do you get loads of loot chests? In ancient cities, of course. And the other good thing about going in here and looting some chests is I could really do with Swift Sneak 3, as that'll help me flying around in my jetpack when I'm sneaking. We'll just uh, go see what we can get. Straddle jump too, I'll take. Oh, nice trousers. Dragon's breath. Oh, there we go. Set off my first shriekery thing. Diamonds. Swift Sneak 3. Oh, I think that was my third shrieker. Oh, oh, we got a warden. I can't see anything. It's the whole point. I'll just set another one off. 
Digging. Is that another warden? Oh, jeez. Leave me alone. Wow, look at this area. With the bookcases and stuff. There's one just there. I didn't even see him. Oh, Globeries. Suspicious gravel. This is a 100% good way of getting beetroot seeds. What am I going to get? An amethyst shot. Oh. Wasn't me. Redstone. I don't need redstone. I need beetroot seeds. Yeah, I'll just spawn another one. While we're here, just to give you an idea of how ridiculously large this ancient city is, I'm actually in four of them. That means there should be plenty of chests. It also means there's going to be plenty of wardens. Fortunately for me, I'm pretty light on my feet with this jetpack, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Bless you. No, it wasn't a sneeze. Ooh, smithing template. No beetroot seeds. <laughs> Nothing could go wrong here. I can't fit any more in my backpack. <laughs> We've got like six wardens around here now. Why is everything you get non-stackable? Ooh, decorating pots. Oh, no, not again. I, I want to look in the pots. You know where I am. He's looking at me. Hey, thank you. I've been the good boy. I'm on the good list to do this year for Christmas. Ah, whoa, he got me. Leave me alone. I just want beetroot seeds. You can keep the rest. Ah, whoa. Jeez. <gasps> He's coming back. Whoa. How do you keep finding me? Come on, beetroot seed. A diamond. I don't want diamonds. I want beetroot seeds. <gasps> what was that? What is that noise? What is that noise? What are you? You're dead. That's what you are. A screecher soul. Wow. That's a lot of amethyst. Worst ancient city ever. My backpacks full, pockets full, you name it, it's full. Is there anything useful? No. Just smithing templates, diamonds, golden carrots, potions, swift sneak books, copper, iron, gold. Just junk. No beetroot seeds at all. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, another screechy thing. Give me your soul. Oh, there's another screechy thing, and I've just been hit. Oh, morning. You're dead. Oh, got me right in the bum. Oh, no, not again. Leave me. I'm trying to get things. The dead screecher. Well, I'm a moron. I've not been recording again. Turns out that beetroots are found by the sea, and they're called sea beets. You might also notice I've got a handful of beetroot seeds in my pocket. I went to that village that we started at a long time ago, and they were in there. Okay, so with all of the items now sorted out in there, I want to find out what these screamer souls do. And if you click on this over here, it shows you that it makes a skulk boomer, whatever that is. If I put it down here, is it going to ruin everything? What does it do? Let's grab a skulk sensor and some skulk oh hang on a minute what did what it's like a defense thing and when you set it off wow that's really cool i don't need it but that's very cool okay next on the list of many things to do is to give myself a whole bunch of xp and then i'm gonna take off my trousers and take off my helmet and i'll put my helmet on there and give myself some aqua affinity i'm gonna put some swift sneak on my trousers and the good thing about having swift sneak on your trousers is not only can you sneak fast just sneaking but also with your jetpack because you're basically in sneak mode when you're hovering it means i can go a little bit quicker with that now as well is that any faster take them off oh yeah that that's really 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 slow and if i put them back on that yeah that's much faster that's going to make a big difference to my building okay back here then it's time to plant our beetroot seeds and check on our special dirt stuff which is all now growing quite nicely these are all growing kind of nicely as well and our wild rice is growing too this is fantastic well now that everything's all nicely grown i want to tear it all out and redo this because i'm a little bit concerned and that A, our rice isn't going to get harvested, but I need to check that out. And also, I want this set up more like actual farm lanes, and I just don't think this is achieving that. I also don't think the efficiently placed crops like they are is really making this look much like a farm, so I think I'd rather do it in sections, to be honest with you. So yeah, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to do over here. But first things first, I'm going to test how many of these things are actually going to be harvested by harvesters. And the easiest way to do that is with a bit of powered rail, a cart assembler, a minecart a little bit ow or oh, a little bit of linear chassis is what i was gonna say ow stop it with a little bit of glue on there and a whole bunch of these harvesters oh geez harvest now there we go wow okay oh it does it does the rice okay well that's good news i didn't put any storage on this but yeah the rice has been harvested so that's good news the sweet berries have even been harvested and so's everything oh this is brilliant news oh that's great and now i know i can actually ow or oh, ah, plant everything the way i want it 
it. Right, let me rebuild everything. And, ah, then we'll get an automatic harvesting system. Ah, there's a system in place in here. Jeez. And it turns out that using a silk touch hoe is actually really good for this because I can just grab everything very easily. Okay, I'm starting to get these farmland areas filled in and I've decided to make it a lot wider than I was originally because this was originally going to be all animals down this side, but it's all going to be farmland now and it's going to be good. But I've just discovered something in this mod pack that's going to make our lives even better. And that is peat. And peat comes in a wide variety of things and the way that you get peat is with composters and pointed dripstone. And yet again, back at Hill Valley, I believe I have some pointed dripstone kicking about around here somewhere because I had a pointed dripstone farm in here, but I'm not sure where I put it. Hopefully I put it back in our little storage drip. Yes, I did. Dripstone. Thank you very much. I'm also going to need a whole bunch of stuff that can be composted. Bread. Bread has an 85% chance of being turned into compost for each item and we've got an absolute ton of wheat, so I'm going to make an absolute ton of bread. Hopefully I can craft this nice and quickly. Okay, if I pick all that wheat up, now it's now all in my backpack. Stick bread in that slot in my backpack. And now I just got to sit here forever clicking bread and wheat. Oh jeez, it's going to take forever. Okay, I'm mid-crafting and it looks like we've got another zombie invasion on our hands. They've just all wandered in. I've got villagers upstairs. Hey, you guys. No, no, thank you. Oh jeez. Oh man, that's a whole bunch of bread. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I needed nearly three stacks of composters. And I'm just going to make a very temporary little structure thing inside of this tunnel here. So let's grab a whole bunch of composters. There we go, half a stack should do it. In fact, let's double it up and have 64 composters. Why not? You know what, forget it. Let's triple it up and have even more. Now all I need is a whole bunch of water in the top. And now all that's left to do is fill all of these composters to the brim. Oh, and that's all, that one's already turned to peat, look. Amazing. Oh, that, that didn't take very long at all. And in the absolutely ridiculous amount of time it's taken me to actually fill all of these composters up, he says, I need a little bit more bread. There we go. We're already starting to collect a reasonable amount of peat. And what's so good about peat, you might be asking? Well, peat can not only be turned into other nice things, it can also be smelted into dried peat, it can be turned into mozzy peat, dried peat can be turned into dried peat bricks, and it can even be used as fuel. But the best thing about it is the fact that it's basically exactly the same as that rich soil we were trying to make, that we need loads of rotten flesh floor and I haven't got much, because what you can do is you can place it, you can till it, and then it works as a very fast soil for plants to grow in. It also kind of looks pretty neat as like tracks for vehicles as if a farm vehicle had gone down here which is actually what I want to use it for. You see these lanes here I've created here are for our vehicle that's going to be doing the harvesting to be going up and down. But the strangest thing about all of this in terms of this farm is that farms don't usually have troughs of water just running down the side so what I'm going to do is waterlog those and then place peat there and that kind of makes like tractor looking tire mark things. And the reason I want to use peat is because you can't actually pick up farmland even with silk touch and you can't pick up paths with silk touch and in order to place slabs and use the frame blocks I need to have the block in there to put it in. Well that took way longer than I expected it to but I think it's come out pretty good although you might notice we haven't got any of that peat in here anywhere and that's because when I did put it in it was just way too dark and the wrong colour and it just didn't go it just looked like we had weird dark lines everywhere. As you can see I'm grabbing spiders and the onions probably because there's no light anywhere around here but as you can see we've got a whole bunch of lanes we've got a whole bunch of different crops we've got a whole bunch of hedgerows going around the whole thing we've got gates over there to get out we've got gates down there to get out although i need to sort those steps out and i think it's all come together quite nicely really and yes it does look like i've trodden on loads and broken it but that's just part of the aesthetic i want this to feel like a proper farmer's field where you know people can take the dog for a walk around the outside and they'll accidentally trample on things and yeah basically just tidy but untidy at the same time and I think I've done that so I guess before we do anything else I should probably build a tractor so it can actually go around and to do this we're going to be using underground tracks again just like we did for our forklift trucks and our dumper trucks and the reason I'm doing that rather than using invisible tracks or phantom tracks as they're called is because I still haven't seen any phantoms yet and even if I had even if I had a bunch of phantom tracks I can't lay them on here 
because it's full of grass. If I put phantom tracks on here, it would ruin all the grass and that would ruin the look of the aesthetic. Hey, I see you. You're not camouflaged, you know. Right, down at the farm, we've got a three wide path and then they've got the wheels on the block outside from either that. Jeez, that didn't make any sense. So just for demonstration purposes, imagine our front wheels would be something like that and then our back wheels would be something like this at the back here, although probably not quite as big as that, but you can get the idea. Now, a combined harvester would probably be the sort of thing that would actually harvest some of those. Not all of them. They certainly wouldn't be harvesting cabbages, but we're not going to be using the combine harvester because combine harvesters are absolutely massive and we've got no room for it. So we're going to be building a tractor with a trailer, probably a little bit like a planting type trailer, if you've ever seen one of those, just with some harvesters on the front. And I, oh, hello. And I think that'll look pretty good. Now, in order to build this tractor, I really wanted to go with green. A green tractor sounds good to me, just like the ones I see on fields near me locally. However, I haven't really got any green dye. Back over at Hill Valley for the four millionth time this episode, in my slime factory, I do have lime green dye, so I potentially could use that. And we do have green dye. I totally forgot we had green dye in here. So, okay, I thought I was going to have to go on a whole green dye mission. This is, this is good. This is going to save me a lot of time. Excellent. Right, we've got dye. Let's go back again. Well, I've done my best. It's not easy building lifelike looking tractors in Minecraft, and this is supposed to be a John Deere either 6R or 7R. And I think with a little bit of artistic license, I think this isn't too bad. It kind of does the job we need it to do. You can tell what it is. It looks like a tractor, which was the goal. Now, there's no glass on this side at all because obviously I'm going to need to be able to get a driver in here, but we've got some controls and out the back here, we've got this planter. Now, this is modeled on a planter. Here's the image just so you can see what. What I'm looking at and in, obviously instead of actually having planting things we've got harvesters because we're harvesting and in here we've got a double chest for all of the things that we need to store. The other thing to bear in mind with this is you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit because these are all sort of partial blocks and divided blocks there's no way I can actually connect these front two wheels for the tractor to the actual body so let's just pretend that they are. I haven't glued it together yet so I've no idea whether this is going to even work so I suppose it's time we get the glue out and give it a go. Yeah that's all of that bit in. Okay I think we're just about there with the tractor then i believe that's absolutely everything on there glued okay right there's only one way to find out and that's to assemble it it worked we're just going to call it tractor for now because i'm really good at coming up with names for things and now i need to see if it's actually going to work sit down take the controls and i've oh geez yeah kind of i've kind of missed a bit that's fine let's make sure it's all connected it is we're all connected this is great news right now i need to build some tracks to see how it looks actually going around corners oh and apparently i've just harvested something what am i harvesting in. I don't know. But look at it. Isn't it marvellous? It's wonderful. Oh, dear. Oh, geez. When I've been putting water in, I've kind of a bit washed away all of the... Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of mobs down here. Well, all of the holes are now dug out. I haven't placed any track yet, and that's because I want to test it's actually at the right level before I put all the track down. Can it reach? It can. Oh, wonderful. But is it at the right level? It is. Oh, look at that. Oh, I don't think I've done my harvesters wide enough. Oh, no. Yeah, they need to be four out from the side of the wheels. So they need to go another block out each way. Otherwise, they're going to miss the two middle rows. Of oh, no. Okay, that's another one added on each end. Reassemble it. Move it back down here again. And hopefully now it's going to be wide enough to actually fit down there and get everything in. It is. Oh, good. That's loads better. All right, let's play some track. Oh my goodness, I've done it again. Now that I've put torches all underneath there, everything's just spawning everywhere else. Oh, this is a nightmare. Well, we're getting closer and closer. As you can see behind me now, we have a slope coming down into the farm area, which our tractor is going to drive down. It's going to go all the way around there, down here, back around there, all the way up there, back down here. But then it can't actually get back out that way. And that's not because I've designed the slope wrong. It's just the tracks underneath won't connect in that direction. So then what it's going to have to do is come all the way back around here again and then come out this way through this area here, back up around the top to link back up to where it is and I haven't done any of those connections yet and I don't think I'm going to do them just yet either because I actually want to give this entire thing a test drive and make sure it's actually going to drive around the entire farm. So let's hop into the tractor and go for a drive. How hard could it be? What could possibly go wrong? And I want to go really slowly. Oh, it's already... Oh, it's getting rid of all my grass. Oh, I, oh no, I didn't realise harvesters will get rid of grass. I can't believe it's deleting my grass though. Took me ages to plant all... You have no idea how much bone meal I spent getting all that grass. There we go. Here goes my 
of carrots. Well, look at it go. It is harvesting. And now it's doing my other lanes. Ah, this is where the width comes in, though, you see. On those ones, it needs to be that wide to get half of the field. But there we go. We are harvesting absolutely everything. This is absolutely wonderful. We're getting the sweet berries. We're getting the flax. I don't know how it's going to deal with melons and pumpkins. But we're about to find out what's going to happen. Absol oh, it's got rid of the seeds. Okay. Well, that's not ideal. And it looks like there aren't many areas that haven't been got by this thing. So that's really good news. Oh, geez. We've actually filled this thing on a full harvest. So we're going to need more than a double chest on it as well. But overall, I think that was a roaring success. Although I am really annoyed that all my grass is gone. And the other thing I can do, actually, is I can get rid of the three harvesters in the middle underneath the hopper because it's never actually using those. And then I can have the grass back in the central lanes. So I guess I need to do a little bit more work on the tractor and the rails to get it all finished off. So I'll be back with you when all of that's done. One eternity later. Finally, I think I have finished. And as you can see, I've got rid of that area down there and completely replaced the entire thing with this concretey looking gravel block. I've added in muddy lines where the tractor's probably going to be driving through and I've done all of that area down there, linked it up to our farm down here, and I've even put all of the little bits of grass back in where the harvester can't actually delete it. I've also added a whole bunch of fences around the entire area with lanterns on to keep this place a little bit lighter. And apparently I've done this one way too high up so let's fix that and of course i've dug out even more of that area there and left some path space down there for what we're going to be doing in the future so all in all i think this is all looking a lot better than it did so there's a few little things left to do on this project like linking up the items that we're getting here to feed the animals automatically but realistically that's going to have to wait for another time what i do need to do is actually get a driver for this set up some stations underground to actually get it to go all in the right direction and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to put one on this lane here and call it lane one one on this one here in this direction call it lane two lane three and lane four to make sure it actually goes to each one of those to make sure it does the full loop around there and then we'll have one around this side here as the drop off and then we'll have one around there as the start okay all of the stations are now in place so the first thing i'm going to need is a little driver we're going to shove him in the tractor and we're going to give him a schedule that says to limit his speed at 10 percent because we want this thing going nice and slowly go to farm start and don't leave there till eight o'clock in the morning so basically this this track is going to do the round at eight o'clock every single morning it's going to go around all of the lanes and then it's go to the drop off until it's finished unloading not that there's an unloader set up on this it doesn't even have an item interface yet so we need to sort that out as well but let's see what happens let's give this guy a schedule and now he's just going to wait there until tomorrow morning hey it is just about eight o'clock it is time for the driver to set off whenever you're ready sir i want to see you do a good job nice clean lap no overtaking take it steady off he goes it's working There we go. He has now finished harvesting. He's going to come round to the drop off, but unfortunately there isn't anything for him to actually drop off. So he'll probably just disappear again and go back to the farm start and wait until tomorrow morning to do it all again. Wonderful. I'm so impressed. He did such a good job. Oh, that's amazing. Well, I've done a tiny little bit more work and that was to move this fence over by one block because it was in the way of our harvester when it came past. And I've also added in a new little area under here. If I can, oh geez, I'm right on it. As you can see by by this rotating wool block. Let's see if I can actually fall down in the right place. Here we go. We've got a little unloader. So when the tractor comes into this station, we've got a portable storage interface there. It's going to unload all of those items into this vault here. And all I've added is a speed controller and one of these ugly wool windmill things. Right, that's all of the farming done. He's now off to the drop-off point. Are we going to see it in action? Here we go. We should see a little item interface pop out from underneath. There it is. And if we go down the hole that's just disappeared. Oh, geez. We should see all of the items coming through into here. There we go. It works perfectly. And now that's all gone he should be on his merry way <laughs> on his merry way again off you go mate i'll see you next time goodbye and that's bye from me as well goodbye